Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with a fake Grand Order video. It's been a very long time. So long that I recorded this video once beforehand and completely forgot to put on my mic. So try it, try it again. Uh, I've been very busy with work, so that's where that's why there hasn't been as many videos as I would have liked. But let's get right into this one, because today we're going to be talking about two units that are going to be com coming as soon as this current banner and stuff ends. So it's going to be a part of the Arc 1 Improvements Part 4. It's going to feature Chicago and Ishtar, and I figure I may as well talk about it. So that's going to be today's video. So, before we start, uh, both, it didn't let me tell you right now, if you are summoning for this banner, there's nothing I can say that can influence <laughs> whether or not you're going to be summoning on this banner. You already know if you're going to be summoning on this banner. I know for a fact that there were probably likely better things to be summoning for um, than these two, but if I did not have either one of them, I would summon, but I have both of them. And <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I just feel like mentioning that up beforehand and before I go into actually talking about the units. Because sometimes I feel like, um, sometimes I can feel, I feels like I'm being a little bit too critical on units that are overall very good and are ones that people want regardless of anything. So I figured that's a little prerequisite before we get into them. Uh, so let's go right into them. So Arc 1 Improvements, it should start, um... On JP, it started a day after this This basically ended, which was Arjuna in the previous arc. Arjuna, Karna, Dantes, and Nightingale stuff. So for the NA side, it should be somewhere over here. Uh, day, 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 day. This ends on the 23rd, so likely this will be either on the 23rd or the 24th, depending on how time zones work and all that kind of business. So here's the banner. The banner is very simple. It's going to feature Chicago and it's going to feature Ishar. I should also mention this is also coming with with them. It's the Advanced Quest Part 1, which is where we'll be able to get the um, uh, the Void Refuse, aka the Ash, that makes it easier to grind. We'll also be able to get Mary, the main interlude, Merry Christmas from the Underworld, for free uh, if you have cleared Babylonia. The reason that this is... I think sometimes some people ask, why were some made into a main interlude and some others weren't? Um, I believe the reason is because is they made they try and prioritize the ones that are sort of story important. And Erish Goggles can't... Be, due to the events of Babylonia and them kind of mentioning she can't be summoned, I think they had to make a main, main interlude. They had to make Merry Christmas. They had to make an entire Christmas event to explain why it's actually possible to summon Erish Goggle. Because if you actually remember Bam Babylonia, and this is true when she first debuted on JP, she didn't have a sprite. She had a ghost. She had like a little ghost thing that represented her. And it wasn't until Christmas time. And for the longest time, she was one of the meme units people wanted because they're like, we want Irish Goggle, we want this. And it's supposed to not be possible. So there you go. That's going to be coming. And then there'll also be half AP cost for uh, free quest with Void Refuse in it. But let's go over the banner. And we'll start with Ishtar. Ishtar, she is a archer who is one quick, two arts, two buster. Active skill, manifestation, and beauty beat. This is a very easy unit to talk about because she increases party's attack for three turns and then increases party's crit damage for three turns, 20% for both of them on a cooldown of five. Second skill, gleaming brilliant crown A. 80% uh, chance to ignore invincibility and to grant self-invincibility. Both of these proc at different times. Um... Uh, and then charges on MP gauge. Uh, the MP charge is 50% with a cooldown of 6. The third skill is the Mana Burst Gems A+. 500% chance to grant self a delaying buff for one turn. Unstackable. Kind of important. Increase own attack for one turn after one turn. The attack up is 50%. And the cooldown is 3. Uh, which is very good. Especially now with Vich. Passive skill. Magic Resistance A. Independent Action A. And Goddess Essence B. Uh, third skill is an anti-ruler attack damage aptitude, and a noble phantasm is a rank EX after interlude 2, on gal ta ki gal se, the mountain range shaking firewood of Venus, which is an anti-mountain rank EX noble phantasm of the buster variety. It hits three times. It deals damage to all enemies. You gain 20 crit stars. The damage at MP level 1 is 400%, and at five, level 5, it's 600%. And then the overcharge effect is an increase to buster performance for one turn. This activates first. 
at charge level 1, it is 20%, and then at the final charge level, it is 60%, and that is Ishtar, Archer Ishtar. She's very good. She's focused on one thing, really, uh, and that is having a buttload of attack and having very low cooldowns, so that makes it so she works very well with Vich. For example, this ability, obviously you can't stack it, but you can definitely use it on turn 1. It activates and you get the 50% next turn, and then due to Vich lowering the cooldowns, you can use it again, and then you get a 50% for next turn, so you basically have two turns of 50% attack up, which is crazy. This uh, this ability I remember back in the day, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, and it took me a very long time <laughs> to kind of come around on it and be like, okay, no, it is a very good skill. Um, and it's only gotten better with age, honestly. <laughs> It's kind of crazy, uh, to be honest. Um, and it's very fun as well <laughs> to use. Um, the only thing that is a negative on her kit is the 80% chance to ignore invincibility and the 80% chance to grant self-invincibility. It should be 100%, and if she was a modern unit, both of these would be a 100% chance, but she was not a modern unit when she released. And to be honest, for how old Ishtar is, because, let me see, when did she first release... She released back in Babylonia, which has to be somewhere around early into the game. No, she didn't even release at Babylonia. She released during Christmas, I want to say. Yeah, she was the Christmas unit for... Um, <laughs> yeah, she was, the Chris she was here. She was the Christmas unit for Santa Spam Lily over here. Didn't, it wasn't involved in the story at all. <laughs> she was just the unit that was there. And that was... That is over... God, that is old. That is one, two, three, four, five years. Six years? An almost six years year old unit. Actually, five years minus a couple... Plus a couple months here. A five-year-old unit that is still able to pretty easily pump out a bunch of attack is pretty impressive. Um... Not a lot of units can do that. The only real negative is she has is, again, like I said, if you're trying to make her be built in a way that's kind of defensive, like maybe you wanted to use her in a challenge quest or something like that, the fact that this isn't 100% is kind of a bummer. And obviously, if she fails at that, she has literally nothing. <laughs> she has no defense. If she fails, if she fails this 80% chance to grant herself an invincibility for a single turn, she has no defense to anything. She is literally defenseless. In every kind of imaginable way. But yeah, no, she's still a very solid buster choice for archers. I think of the AoE um, archers in the game. There are four that most people use. One of them is Gilgamesh. The other one is Tesla. One of them is obviously Ishtar. And I believe another one is Napoleon. Though I haven't heard very many people talk about Napoleon. I've heard people talk about Gilgamesh. I've heard people talk about uh, Tesla, not a lot of people talk about Napoleon, and Ishtar is Ishtar, and you can use her. And I can say from my experience using her, I've never had an issue <clears throat> clearing out uh, waves using her for AoE grinding, and it's very hard to not when you have constant attack up skills, which is kind of crazy. Um, and yeah, and I kind of like it. It's a shame that she doesn't have more defensive capabilities, but maybe that's something they can fix down the line. If they ever decide to buff her at some point. I don't think she needs a buff to her attack or anything else. Like, this skill doesn't need to really be buffed. I think this skill is perfectly good. Because it is party-wide. It's a party-wide 20% and as well, along with crit damage. So this skill would be um, really nice if you could actually use her in a challenge setting as a slight support increase. If this was actually a little bit better. But that's really the only negative I have for her. She's great for, like I've said also many times with Vich, she, her cooldowns are crazy low. This is on a 5 turn cooldown, so you will get it back just naturally if you use it on turn 1. You get this, this back on turn 2. <laughs> you get this back on turn 3. You get this back on... You could actually get this back on turn 2. I just realized you get this back on turn 2. You get this back on turn 2, and then you... Yeah, it's really good. It's so really good. Um... But yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, Archer Ishtar. Uh, very good unit. Still very solid. Next, Irish Coggle. Irish Coggle, she is a Lancer. Goddess of the Nether Realm. Uh, two quick, one arts, two buster. First skill, the Secret of the Great Crown A. Chance to grant self debuff immunity for one turn. Chance to grant self instant kill immunity for a single turn. 
Chance to increase buff removal resistance by 100% for one turn. Grant self invincibility for one turn. The debuff, uh, instant kill, and buff removal uh, chance up is all 80%. <clears throat> And the cooldown is of 6, so kind of similar to Ishtar, she has a bunch of 80% chances, but her invincibility is 100% chance, so that makes it a little bit better. Second skill, Mana Burst KJ+, Plus, increases own buster performance for one turn, charges on MP gauge, the buster increases 50%, and the MP up is 50%, and this is a cooldown of 6. Her third skill is the Blessing of the Kerr EX, grants party the Blessing of the Kerr buff for 3 turns, unstackable. Blessing of Kerr enables additional effects from Erish Goggle's NP, increases party's defense for 3 turns, increases party's MP generation rate for 3 turns, increases party's max HP for 3 turns. Uh, the defense up is 20%, the MP rate up is 30%, and the max HP is 3000 on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance D, Territory Creation A+, and Goddess X Essence B. The Append skill, which is the third one, is an anti-assassin attack damage aptitude, and her rank A+, Noble Phantasm is the Kortikigal Arcala, which she gets after her first strengthening. The Bellows of the Kerr that tramples upon a core is a rank A plus anti-mountain noble phantasm. Both of them are anti-mountain because they both just absolutely hate mountains. Um, it's Buster. It deals damage to all enemies. It deals 150% damage if they are the Earth attribute, and then there's an increase of attack allies with the Blessing of Kerr buff by 20% for three turns. Increases their critical attack chant resistance by 20% for 3 turns, and then grants them instant kill immunity for 3 turns. Uh, the damage is 400% at level 1, 600% at level 5. Overcharge effect at 100% uh, is 10% as 10% of buster up before, which activates first. And at charge level 500% is 50%. She also has a costume dress that will be coming with Lost Belt 7, which is really good, but I won't be showing it just in case there's someone who wants to keep the surprise going. Uh, it is really good, though, and um, is one of the reasons why I'm very happy I was able to get Erish Coggle when I did. So that's Erish Coggle. She is a uh, very good Lancer. Um, the only thing that is a negative about her is that occasionally, occasionally she doesn't do enough damage. And this is from my case of using her, because I was able to actually recently get her. A lot of the times when I talk about a unit, I have to rely on what other people have to say about them and kind of like judge it on my own and kind of look at them that way for these two units i actually do own them so i can give you my experience and tell you just how i feel about them um for irish coggle uh she does pretty well at farming um she's able to do it obviously because she has a 50 percent np up um and with <laughs> with with the oberon setup it's definitely possible for you to kind of get things done and it's easy but occasionally on some nodes, um, especially if you are not able to use a craft essence that gives like at least a decent amount of buster up increase, um, she does run into a little bit of an issue of she doesn't deal enough damage on maybe the second go around. And the reason is, is because the only increase of damage that she gets is from this buster up. All the blessing of curse, which is what she gives to the party, doesn't offer any real attack the only thing that she get is thankfully was this increase from attack which was added from a bonus but <laughs> realistically she's basically getting 50 percent for two turns because this is on a cooldown of six so if you use it on the first turn you'll have it then and then when you use it again near the end of the near the end of it you'll be able to use it again which will be another 50 percent and this 20 percent should be able to stack so you'll get 20 percent on turn one 40 percent yeah, it's it's a decent amount, but it's not like a crazy amount compared to everything else. Um, it's the only real negative I have, but thankfully that negative can be completely negated if you're just fighting nothing but earth attributes. If you're fighting nothing but earth attributes, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And yeah, that's basically it. Erish Coggle, she is still, I think, a very good unit. The good thing is, is that she has a built-in niche in something else, because this is the main... Mm, so let's assume, again, if you want to use a Buster Lancer who is AoE, um, if you actually want to use the best of the best, everyone knows who that is. That's Melusane. There's no point in re really bringing it up, because if you have Melusane and you have her built up for AoE, you can use her, and no one can compare to that. It's just not a very fair comparison to give. But if you're someone who just wants to use Irish Coggle for what she's kind of built for, then she's able to be used in a pretty effective way. She also has another kind of built-in niche to her, which is this instant kill. The fact that this instant kills at an 80% is a big bummer. 
Um, because instant kill can be, uh, instant kill resistance or immunity for a single turn can be very good, especially if you are in a challenge quest scenario. Like, I always bring up the King of Song, which might, I'm starting to think might be the only challenge quest <laughs> with instant kill so easily available. You can see I'm a little bit traumatized from it because of my experience. But you can have, uh, for instance, anytime there's a challenge quest related to instant kill, it's always nice to have a unit that you can say, well, I know for a fact that she can grant herself instant kill immunity. The bummer is, is that this is at an 80%, but it's okay because her actual MP makes it so that they can be immune for three turns. So then you run into the fun game, hey, as long as this MP is always up, my dudes always have instant kill immunity. Whether or not you're able to keep it up is an own ch is his own challenge of its own self, but that makes the game more fun in my kind of case. And I kind of like the idea of like having a unit that can be used in multiple kind of different ways. Yes, you can use her for AoE farming, and it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly acceptable. It's perfectly good. Um... But also, if there's ever a case where you maybe want to try, for some reason, there is a f challenging fight that says, like, yo, my main gimmick is instant kill, and I'm going to be killing you, you have your girl there to say, like, actually, let me g give you some instant kill, and then you can kind of build around that and start, you know, have fun. <laughs> a lot of Fago is taking units and having fun with them, including some bad ones. Thankfully, this is a good one. If you have the most fun using someone like Melusane to completely dominate, I think there's nothing wrong with that. If you have someone who wants to maybe play around a gimmick, I think there's nothing wrong with that. And then there's people who will just use the absolute worst units imaginable and try and win with them, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just like there's, in theory, nothing wrong with taking a thousand turns and playing stall with Gene and all these other units. It's not really the way I would play the game. But it is a way to experience the game, and if that's the way you kind of have fun, you can have fun that way. So yeah, Erish Coggle. I'm always really happy that I have her. I do, I try and spread the love a little bit between her and Melusane. It is really hard when you have Melusane, um, because Melusane is just so crazy strong. But I try and keep it so that like I only really use Melusane when I need her, and anytime I don't need... It's kind of like the, the boss levels. At that point, I'm now the boss. She's the mini boss. If a Lancer node, if I have, if I run into a node that requires a Lancer AoE, she's the first one that I send out. And if she's not 100% having full efficiency there, then they work their way up and Melusane comes in and kind of finishes the job for them. But thankfully, she doesn't really have that much trouble. But again, I'm also using Vich and Ober, like Oberon, and honestly, most Buster units can take out most nodes no problem when you're doing that. Um, the only issue that runs into it is if maybe if you run into a boss with a really meaty, um, high HP on the second node, it can be a little bit troublesome. Eh, just don't run into those. <laughs> and the problem is solved. Or maybe get more NP levels for her, or get some golden foes in there. All I hear are... There are solutions to the problem when it comes to damage. You can pump up all your favorite units to make them meet your demand. So that's Irish Goggle and that's Ishtar. Um, like I said at the beginning, I already know people are going to be summoning for this. I just wanted to give my specific opinion. If you're someone who was like, oh, I don't know, are these units even good? Or is it just a case of just like, hey, yo, do they only summon this because it's Rin? And yeah, it's a combination. It's very lucky that every single Rin unit in the game... Uh, Rin face unit, I guess. I guess they are uh, actually only Space Ishtar is a Rin face. These two are actually just in Rin's body. Um, even though Ishtar is in the actual body, and I think Erish Goggle is in like the soul body or something like that. It's very complicated. Anyway, uh, both of these units are very good. If you are a fan of Rin, or you're a fan of Farish Goggle, and you're a fan of Ishtar, you will not be disappointed having them. If you are disappointed, I would really like to hear how your thoughts on it, actually, just so I can have a better understanding for maybe the next time I have to bring them up. I would actually be very curious to hear if anyone that has them, do you feel that they actually need a buff in some areas? I feel like the Noble Phantasm buffs that they got make it enough. Like, Ishtar gets some crit stars, um, which is nice. Uh, I think the only one that I'd actually would buff is Ishtar's second ability, and it would only be second skill. It would only be so that she would just get 100% on the... Um, 100% on her skills. And the same thing, I would probably say the same thing for Erish Goggle, where I would only really buff the first skill to make it so that it's 100% as opposed to 80%. But that's just me. And that's the end of the video, everyone, because I think my mom's coming home. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.
Bye. <laughs> Best of luck on your summons. Oh, she's not coming home. It's fine. Anyway, <laughs> it's the end of the video. Tell me your thoughts, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I gotta stop recording these so close to when she comes home from work.